back then, you could not imagine that you would ever see these characters that interesting, that fascinating, get the attention of Hollywood. But guess what? Here we are, the Wolverine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome James Mangold, the director of Wolverine. Is this on? Yes, yes. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. It is great to see you. I have to say, this is, this is a pure personal comment. Directed two of my favorite movies. 310 to, uh, to Yuma and Copland. Yeah. It's a pretty great movie. Thank you, Jeff. Some tough guy movies. Is this a tough guy movie? This is a tough guy movie. I think one of the things you and I set out to do was with the space we had with making a movie just about Logan, and maybe there was another one that set out to do that, but it ended up with a lot of other mutants in it as well. We had enough space here to make a movie about Logan, um, about inside him, and I think, and about his journey and where he comes from and where he's headed. Yeah, and, and some of the characters uh, that we were introduced to in the comics that I mentioned, but then I've seen this film, uh, and it's great, and it goes well, well beyond that. Uh, tell us. Well, the, the the whole Japanese setting gave me kind of, I hope, a license to change the tone a little bit, to ratchet things both up and down a little bit, meaning make the action. I hope you agree when you see it a little more intense, um, a little more physical. You know, Logan is one of the one of the few superheroes who can't jump tall buildings in a single bound, can't change the atmosphere, can't fly out of our atmosphere, can't pull a 747 down. But what he can do, other than knock over a bottle, is he can use his claws and he has indestructible, he has an incredible spinal cord and, he can, and a skeleton and he can heal. And it's like what is so important to me about Logan in this is that we get inside the anger and the rage that has defined the character in comic books for years but I don't think it's had a chance to be seen both in action and drama in the film itself. It's fantastic. And the, um, you know, we've seen Wolverine. This will be the sixth movie that he's in, I believe. And I think next year is seven. That includes the 28 seconds. Yeah, that's, one. yeah. But that's pretty incredible if you think that they were all portrayed by the same man. I mean, this man has been a, the same superhero more than Christopher Reeve was Superman. He's been, you know, well, I think I think Jeff Hugh is... is there's been some roles in history. I think Clint is the man with no name. I think Sean Connery is the first Bond. I think I think Hugh Jackman is in that strata. I think that I think that he encompasses both. I think what fans love about him is he encompasses both the physicality of the role and also the heart of the role. I think no matter what he does and who he hurts and who he's cutting and who he's cursing, you can see in his eyes there's something beyond that. I also think to just say, I don't think Hugh has ever been in this kind of shape for a movie before, and I think he's been in pretty badass shape before, but what Hugh did before we started this, after being skin and bones in Les Mis, and then bulking up for this movie, I think it's pretty phenomenal, and if you haven't seen it in the trailers, it is phenomenal. So do we have a video message from Hugh? Video message. We have we have a we have a special thing we want to show. Okay, well, what, whatever. Let's. Uh, where do I stand when we're running this? Should I tuck myself? I'll go. I don't want to. I'll, I'll get vertigo. You should put on your 3D glasses. We should run this. Stories all my life. I've loved this world and this character all my life. And I hope when you see it in only a few days, you'll agree with me that my partner and I um, get, got somewhere bringing it to the screen. My partner, who I'm speaking about, is a fan for the last 12 years, who I got the honor to make another film with many years ago, 12 years ago to be exact. Um, and I think he's done a pretty damn got good job playing Wolverine over those 12 years. I ever get in this business is to come here to Hall H to thank you guys for allowing us to do this. Thank you. Hugh, it's so great seeing the character up there. It's so great seeing the Wolverine up there. And for you, I mean, what can you tell us about the journey the character has in this movie? It's, it's an extraordinary change for him. Uh, everything Jim and I wanted to do about this movie was to make sure that for fans who have seen the X-Men movies, the first Wolverine movie, or for those who haven't, this is something completely fresh, completely different. Obviously, you guys know it emanates from probably one of the most famous uh, comic book arcs, the Japanese story, or Samurai Saga. And 13 years ago, I, I first read that uh, in my trailer, that comic book, whilst being in my trailer 
filming X-Men 1 and I said to Lauren Shaladonna, this is the movie we need to make. Well, 13 years later it's here. I think you get to understand way more about the character than you've ever seen before. And as many of you have said to me on planes, in the street, uh, in various places around the world, you finally get to see the Berserker Rage in full. So I hope you enjoy it. James, James, I want to ask you a little bit. Uh, we have some more time. What, uh, for you, you know, one of the things that you got to do in this film is we see a Wolverine who does suffer, who is in peril, because he's always healed before, but things are a little different in this movie, right? Well, I don't want to give anything away, but I think that one of the things that we wanted to explore in this film that was resonating through, throughout Claremont Miller and I think is a big issue for any character that doesn't die, that can't, that never, that can recover from any injury, or in Logan's case, I guess almost any injury, is, is how do you go on living when everyone you know and love fades away? What is that like? You know, we've seen even in the first uh, Origins and in the, in the other X-Men and in our film, we see Logan's been present through history. And we know for the comic books, he's been present through history. He's been here a long time. But what's that like? Falling in love, losing, losing the people you care about, watching people die and having to start again. And let's be, let's be honest, Logan is exactly the most socially adept character we've ever seen in comic books. So when you lose the people you're intimate with, at some point, you start to withdraw and get low. And it was our decision when we decided where we are going to start this film in relation to the timeline of everything else, that we are going to begin when Logan's lost everybody. He's lost everybody. The, the X-Men, Professor X, Jean Grey, by his own hand, in fact. And so, when we find him in the Yukon as Claremont Miller begins, we're finding also a character who has retreated from relationships with other living people. And, you know, romance, doesn't always go well in superhero movies. Uh, in Marvel movies in general, I mean, the great romances would be, you know, Peter Parker and Mary Jane or Gwen, and, and of course, Tony Stark and, and Tony Stark. Uh, Logan, Logan, loves, Logan loves women. Logan has, lo I mean, Logan has always loved women, if there's one place, yeah. I mean, you, comment on it. Yeah, no, we talked about this right from the beginning. Uh, there was another thing, apart from the relationship with Jean Grey, I felt we could go way further with it, and is, is in the DNA of the comic book, uh, uh, series is that he's saving grace and his kryptonite is women. So uh, finally in, in this movie there are four incredible female characters. There is, as you saw briefly there, Jean Grey is back. You get to understand probably more of that uh, relationship, what it means to him. But there are three other uh, great female characters and personally and on behalf of Wolverine that was a great thing. <laughs> Sometimes I felt like we were making a Fellini film. <laughs> With hardcore action. Chill out. <laughs> and this, is a very, uh, this is a little specific, but the claws look different this time around. We retooled them a little, just a little. We did a couple things. I think you might notice the hair is a little less nutty. 80s rock. The uh, and um, and uh, and the claws we added. We actually, I actually went back and we had props. I was just looking at detailed drawings in Claremont Miller and saying there's a lot more bevels and a lot more, a lot more stuff happening on these blades. The, the, the blades in the comic book were more lethal from every direction. Um, and the ones that I'd seen, when they brought out the ones that they had used in previous films, it looked like you could only get cut one way. Well, we wanted to make it you could get cut two ways, so. Three. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of puncture wounds in this film. Yes. Puncture wounds, puncture wounds, he's saying, yes. A lot of puncture wounds, yes. Uh, and some real puncture wounds, let me tell you. I am very, um, I'm trying to remember the name of that TV show I used to watch growing up. One of you guys will know. Danger, Danger, Will Robertson. What was that? Lost in Space. Lost in Space. <laughs> Sometimes with the claws, I resemble the robot. With, oh, I'm like, I'm a little... I have punctured my thighs, my forehead, uh, Mystique Double uh, got it in the arm, so I'm a little dangerous with those claws. But So in the making of, and also in the movie, there's quite a lot of puncture holes. But he's brave. I mean, that you see some of that fight when he goes, uh, what kind of, when Kuroyuki Sonata says, what kind of monster are you, and Hugh replies. <laughs> <laughs> more simple. Okay, you're right. Oh, nice. nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Sorry for the unprepared thing there. More echo, please. The, um, it's better in the movie, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, the point I was making is that fight between those two. Hiroyuki is one of the great um, uh, swordsmen and martial artists of Japan, and a great action star there. And Hugh, and he, he deserves it. He's amazing. And 
um, as a canon of films behind you. And that fight with long sword and short sword and claw is was something to behold and is on the film. It was also something me kneeling beside the camera to behold in real life because these two these two badasses were going at it with blades, and it was just about staying out of each other's way. Those those were sharp. You know when. Uh, uh the movie that comes out next year with Wolverine. With that film, Wolverine will tie Superman for a number of movies he's been in. Um, and he will be second only to Batman, who is a DC Comics character, I'm told. Um, <laughs> Hugh, for you, and you're, and those other two, I mean, Superman's been played by five different actors. Uh, and, and this is your character uh, is going to tie Superman. I mean, what is that like for you to, to kind of try to get your head around? It's very, very difficult, and it's actually a. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. I, well, really, I should be clapping you all because when X Men One came out, really, no one knew how popular it was going to be, and that's because no one understood the power of the fans that are represented here today. And, and I am forever grateful to you all because uh, that was the first movie I ever did in America. I got the part almost 14 years ago and I am loving playing it more than ever but I hope you don't mind me doing this. Uh, I did it last time I was here and I I'm not someone to take things for granted and who knows this may be the last time I am here with Wolverine. I'm not fishing for anything I'm just saying who knows what's going to happen but I have to point out so many people for many, many decades before me, uh, picking up the mantle of Wolverine, created, nurtured, and made that role into what it is. And some of them are not here today, but there is one man who is Len Wein. Stand up, Len. Where are you? Yeah! Where's Len Wein? Here's Len. by no means the first to be cast as Wolverine. Uh, someone else already had the role, unfortunately couldn't do it. I know uh, from several actors, Russell Crowe being one, that the part was offered to a number. I, I, not only did I come off the reserve bench, I was somewhere deep in the stands when they were making this movie. And when an actor gets to come onto the field and get probably what I think is the greatest role out there, I'm not going to let it go easily. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? The Wolverine? You guys think James? James, thank you so much for joining us. July 26th. July 26th. Hugh, you, thank you so much. Sorry, I've just got one little thing to add. Uh, it's not very often I'm here, but listen. One of the great things that being in uh, movies like this, these big blockbusters playing a character like this has afforded me is the opportunity to do other things. I've had great opportunities which this role has offered me. And particularly being able to do smaller, uh, more indie movies. And I hope you don't mind Jeff, I certainly hope Fox doesn't mind, but I'd love to take this opportunity to introduce you to the director of a movie I've got coming up. Um, it's a smaller movie and I'd like to bring him out on stage. It won't take long. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Singer! Here it's been a few years, like a decade. It's great to be on stage with you. It's incredible, and uh, it's been a really great journey. We're up in Montreal making uh, X Men: Days of Future Past. Woo! A lot of the visual effects, you know, none of the visual effects are really uh, complete and many of them aren't even works and we still have a month of shooting to go. But um, I did cut together a little thing, a little piece of film to show. It's in 3D, so 
put your glasses on. I mean, really shot in 3D. Oh, 
Trask. It's phenomenal too. I was realizing we have all these different franchises represented. I mean, we know we have Game of Thrones and Hunger Games, and you know it just goes on and on. True Blood, Star Trek. It's an amazing panel. This is pretty impressive. You've been here before. Have you ever seen anything like this? Um, I'm having flashbacks. Big list for you. Uh, what's it like to be part of this? Uh, it's amazing. Um, you know, even sitting here, it's, it's scary, but thank you all for coming. Jennifer, how are you? I'm good, thank you. For your character, I mean, uh, this is a chance to find out more about her. I mean, she's one of the bigger mysteries, really. You know, her relationships and the way that she fits in. Uh, it must be kind of exciting for you to return and, and find out where her story is going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's definitely taken on to... Um, she's starting to find her journey into the, the Rebecca Romaine, kind of the later mystique that we know, but is also kind of still very... Um, close to Charles, and well, they haven't seen each other for a long time, so not, not close geographically. But, um, yeah, this is kind of her journey into becoming who she's going to be. Sure. Mr. Fassbender, how are you? Sir? He was hiding behind the podium watching the footage. That's where I found this. <laughs> so, what the hell was that thing? I don't know, but we're becoming friends. Uh, it's great to be back here. Um, it's fantastic to see so many sort of, you know, film enthusiasts, comic book enthusiasts, crazy people. It's nice to be here. Uh, very excited to be back. Fantastic. And James, how are you? It's I'm really good. I can't be in a room with this many people without saying, how you doing, Comic Con? I was in the halls this morning, that's where I got my cool t-shirt, and it is amazing the passion you guys have, so it's awesome to be amongst you. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Singer, you know, when you, as the director of this film, you pulling together a lot of disparate things, you have two different sets of X-Men, uh, you have a very large cast, obviously they're not all in the same place at one time, but does that, uh, is that an invigorating challenge, or is that uh, you know, something you have to overcome? Uh, it's a scheduling nightmare. It's a logistical nightmare. But, uh, but no, it, it's, it's great. I actually like ensemble films. I, I started with uh, Usual Suspects, which is awesome. And uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy working with a, a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of interesting people to cut to making an ensemble film, and uh, so I think the more the merrier. But I think the blend of these two casts is extremely unique, um, and it's just a thrill for me, because I, I was involved as a producer with uh, X-Men First Class and Story Writer, but not as a director, so it's an opportunity to work with this incredible group of people, uh, who I've been enormous fans of for years, and to return with uh, this family of people who uh, I'm right at home with, so it, it, it came quite easy. That's great. Very quickly for you, I mean, you talked a little bit about how much the role means to you, but the ensemble, being back with a group of people that you know, how, how uh, uh, does that fit in for you? Oh man, this is an embarrassment of riches. I mean, look, to work with the, the people who were in the very first film I ever did, that's an incredible alone, and then to work with this new line, this is about, this is two great movies in one. If I just got to do one of these movies in my life, I'd be happy. The fact I'm with everybody here, uh, this is something I'll never forget. Next two guys, I have to tell you.
Patrick, uh, earlier today you were telling me a little bit about the, the uh, esprit de corps of the Starfleet crew that you were part of. Compare this ensemble and, and, and the energy and, and the, the togetherness of it. We've heard the word blessing several times today and to experience uh, a job uh, as an actor with a great group of people whom you not only respect and admire but love to once in a career is um, enviable but in my case to have had that experience twice in a career feels quite extraordinary. That's lovely. And Ian, uh, we were talking earlier as well, how are you sir? You and Patrick, your work is not done when you finish the mutant work. You uh, have more no, time. it is not. I'd just like to say uh, how lovely it is to be back in California. I feel safe here now you've got rid of Proposition 8. <laughs> Looking for a husband, it's great to meet you, Michael. <laughs> Because uh, Patrick and I, because of these movies, and thank you, Brian. Because although we've had very similar careers on stage and, and in classical theatre before we uh, got to be part of this uh, wonderful journey, uh, we're, we've now got even closer together, and uh, so close that we're going to do two plays, and they're going to be on Broadway uh, in the autumn. You can come and see us on stage. And look forward to seeing you. The panel previous to us was called uh, Women Who Kick Ass, Kick Ass, and that applies to this panel as well. We have three Oscar winners on this panel, three of them, all women. Uh, and the next two, Hallie and Anna. Hallie, how are you? see as your favorite thing about Storm? She's such a, a wonderful character, such a classy character. What is it though that really resonates with you? I, you know, what I've always loved about Storm is that well, something I love about her and something I hate about her. I'm going to tell you what I love first. What I love about Storm is that she's, she's like the Earth Mother of the group. And I think that's part of my own personality that resonates and what attracted me to Storm in the beginning. She's usually the calm, cool voice of reason. Um, um, besides being a badass when she needs to be, she's, she's kind of the mom of the group. What I hate about Storm is that she never gets any love. Like, what's up with Storm? I love Storm. more about the comic book than me, probably. Is she like asexual and nobody's told me? No, no, Black Panther. Because I really don't understand Mary's Black Panther. why Storm made me love. <laughs> but I, I love, when, when I got called to come back and play Storm again, it didn't take me but a half a second to say, send me that wig, give me that costume, I, I'm in. I love being a part of this franchise and I love all the people that are sitting up here, the ones I've known for 13 years and the new friends that I've just made. I couldn't think of a better way to spend time working on a movie with this great group of people. And I'm so glad Brian Singer is back. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad. with True Blood and, and whatever, all that fantastic success. Uh, and does that make it even better to go back to a character that predated that for you? Um, those are a huge hole for people to people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, I, uh, obviously a lot has happened in the last you know, 13 years of probably all of our lives, but um, it's incredibly exciting to get to come back. Um, you know, this was, uh, I got cast since we were in our 17, you know, so 
it's um it's really 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 amazing to be back and to have full yeah, awesome. happy. So what's up with the ice man? <laughs> Bobby's back. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I can, uh, I can say almost the same thing as everybody else. Uh, four films, Ann and I were teenagers. We get to come back every four or five years, and as you grow as a person, as you grow as an actor, you get to return to this amazing franchise with amazing people. So. It's amazing to be back with old friends, great to meet new ones, and um, I think there's going to be some really cool stuff that people don't expect to see, or they've been possibly waiting to see from a lot of these characters, so... Yeah. It's great. Fantastic. And Ellen, uh, it's great to see you. Sorry. I was lucky enough to meet you when on the set of Inception, I think, is when we first met, and I remember you saying... How much you loved making a movie of that scale and with the special effects and the visual ambition of it. Yeah. So uh, I was, it occurs to me you must be very, very excited to be back in the mutant universe. A absolutely. And, you know, when I did the, the first one, I, you know, had never been on a set remotely to that size or scale. So it sort of blew my mind and was joining a group of people who were already close, but they could not have been, you know, more lovely and, and welcoming and so sweet. And then never did I expect to be back playing Kitty Pride again and just couldn't be more excited. And then Omar, welcome sir, how are you? And why don't you tell us a little bit about your character? That's it, um, it's Sasa, it's Visho. Um, it's um... Um, a guy from the future, and um, he, um, he fights for survive, so, like all of us. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's one of those characters as an X-Men fan reading the comics that people have always wanted to see on the screen, so it's just very exciting, the idea for the fans to see that character come to life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm sure. And then we're going to go to the audience for some questions, are we? Or we want to... Uh... <laughs> for the producers down there, what, I can't see you guys, I'm sorry. I, what, uh, what would you each see, say is the most important thing that this film had to accomplish? Either in story, or theme, or execution, or casting? Uh, well, I grew up, I think, like most of you, reading um, the comics, and so being loyal to the original stories is the most important thing uh, to us. And like you said, this is an embarrassment of riches of actors, so the same way it's surreal and cool for you to see all these guys up here, I think it's surreal and cool for us, too, on set every day. Uh, so it's, it's really about the original books and the original stories, and um, just trying to honor those the best we can. Fantastic. Lauren, how are you? Just say hello. Hello, and thank you guys for coming, for showing up and supporting our films. You know, we share your love with us. Thank you, really. Um, and it's only because the comics were written so well that we were able to spin these stories. But I gotta say that starting with the first one and getting to this one for me personally, to see this cast mixed together with Brian Singer, it just, it, I almost want to cry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, think, I think for for all of us, probably the most amazing opportunity it offers is uh, in 25 years of making movies, for me personally, I've never seen a better cast assembled in anything at any time. And, and it's matched by a story, thanks to Simon and the underlining comic book, um, that I think is worthy of the cast. Um, and under Brian's, Brian's stewardship. So it's an amazing opportunity for all of us. We're very grateful and uh, excited to share it with you. Yeah, we could, uh, we're going to take a couple questions, but uh, there's not a lot of plot stuff that can be discussed, probably. And then maybe we can watch the footage again. What do you guys think? Yeah. Okay, guys, I have a couple quick questions, okay? Hey there, say your name. William, I feel really bad for asking this because you've given 
me and all of us so much right now. There's so many of you out there. <laughs> so, um, since the X-Men universe is um, expanding now, like the Avengers universe, I'm not going to ask that question, I promise. Um, now that you're combining the X-Men movies that have been made and are going forward with future movies, is there anywhere for... <laughs> So I guess that's a question, it's uh, Deadpool possible. possible. <laughs> Not in this particular movie, but, but yeah, any, anything's possible. It, it, what, it, it really occurred to us that the, the X-Men universe is every bit as large, if you really look at it, as the remaining Marvel universe, the DC universe. And I think if carefully explored, movie by movie, um, much the way Marvel's done and, and DC is beginning to do, um, I think there's a lot of room for growing and expanding, expanding uh, the film canon for, for X-Men. So yeah, I mean, some people could have their own movies, combined movies, all those things are obviously possible because we've seen them working. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I, uh, no, because I say yes, Brian Singer confirms Deadpool. <laughs> what if that means? I don't know. Well, you know what I mean. Well, you know, Hugh, I had a quick question for you. You know, um, there's an actor over in the Marvel Studios universe that's done quite well, named Robert Downey Jr. And I was wondering. I was wondering if it's, he's an actor. Who, who's that? Uh, it's I'll, Robert. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Okay. But I was just wondering, you know, if if Wolverine, Iron Man didn't get along, kind of met each other, would that be like a can opener situation, or what would that? Be? <laughs> who, who, who's gonna walk away from? That? Oh, I don't want to be responsible to take you down Iron Man, but you know. Look. To that, I reckon that'd be fantastic. Uh, some kind of uh, big mashup. I, you know, when I was young in Australia, we had a, co a cartoon on TV that had the superheroes and the Hall of Doom, and they were all in together. That that was 8:30 Saturday morning for me every week. I'm all for it, but uh, there's people way above me who have to decide that one. So <laughs> fantastic. And we're going to take another question. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Alejandra, and well, every second. Getting out in the cold with a uh, wet grass, it's really worth it. Every, every, every. Yeah. You're smoking wet grass. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. So, <laughs> so my question is, uh, if you could pick up to be another X-Men, who would you choose and why? Do another X-Men film besides no, this? No, I think we can pick another character to be. Well, the good thing about my character is I can do that to anyone. <laughs> when you're preparing for the role, when you're going to have your groove, when you're not going to have your groove. Is it different? Is one easier or the harder? My groove? <laughs> groove. Groove. Oh, your groove. I like the idea of the groove, yeah. No. <laughs> the, the Wolverine groove really is the same. And if you come to my house most Saturday nights, I'm grooving as Wolverine, so... You know, uh, in terms of preparation, no different. Uh, you know, Wolverine is Wolverine, and, and uh, every movie, in a way, is an ensemble. But uh, look, okay, let's be honest. Look at this panel. Look at, at, at what I'm turning up to work every day. Uh, not only being able to work in the future part of the movie, but also working in the past with a, a, an ensemble I'd never get to work with, with the man who gave me the job that has defined my career. So it is a, not every day I'm grateful and I, I thank my lucky stars, especially. All right, we got uh, another question from another member of the audience. 
Jones here at Hall H at Comic Con Editions. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm, my name's Adele. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I've come Ooh. over here. That's your TLT. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this is just blowing my mind because I was just ex expecting you. So. Um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the guy from the guy from Australia is going to be here, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Adele. This is totally made my 15-hour flight <laughs> worth a tenfold. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, huge X-Men movie fan, but I was wondering if we we're ever going to see. A gambit road. Yes, we're exploring all options at the moment, right? I'm down. Taking notes, suggestions. Taking notes, suggestions. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm, I'm really jealous. Is there anybody from Scotland here? I'm entirely on my own. I'm very sorry. I'm in my Right, it's fascinating that Quicksilver, as we all know, is like popping up in different places. I don't know what you can say about that. Is there anything? Is it? Uh, yeah, well, Quicksilver was always a part of the story as we were developing it. Um, I, I didn't, it, uh, the casting it was, it took a while to find the right actor for this role. Evan, I'm a huge fan of Evans, and so making that work was really fantastic. Um, it, it, it doesn't, I don't, I, I can't speak to the Avengers, but the, but it's, uh, you know, our character, uh, our character exists, and we'll talk about the character. There you go. Evan, you've described the character. Oh, yes. <laughs> he's, uh, he's very fast. Uh, he's very fast. <laughs> It's quick. I don't know. He's just fast. He just he just talks quick. He, he moves quick. Everybody is very slow compared to him. It's like it's like he's always at an ATM waiting for the bastard in front of him to finish. So it's, it's always kind of like that. He's got excellent genes. <laughs> is it going to be the green costume or the blue costume? It's, it's going to be a. 70s costume. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, you know, I grew up as a kid in the 70s and I had forgotten how hideous some of the clothing was back then. Oh. Now these guys... It's all right. But, but these guys... I look incredible in this film. It's just not... <laughs> they make it look quite good. Um, and, uh, but, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Peter Dinklage looks like my father in this film. What about the Dinklage hair? That handsome? The buddy handsome. <laughs> it's not a wig, it's, it's like his real hair. That's his hair. Everyone thinks that he's asking him in the car, in the house of the wig. It's, that's it. That's real. It just can come like that. Lord, <laughs> I got a sweet Tom Selleck mustache, Spartan too. So. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darian, and my question is for Hugh Jackman. Um, Hugh Jackman, you star in both musicals and big budget films. What unique characteristics do you bring to each of the different mediums? Groove. Groove, yes, groove. Uh, well, I can tell you there won't be any singing as Wolverine, I can tell you that right now. Really? You really want Wolverine the music? I'm gonna slice him! I'm gonna dice him! It's uh... Thank you for your question. Uh, 
every film uh, requires some. I, I feel like I can't answer this seriously now, but <laughs> but it, every, everything uh, requires something different. It, it's just so weird to play a character seven times, and you know, and and so great to be. I, I just remembered, you know, this morning. People say to me all the time, and this is my fourth time here at ComCon, they say all the time, you, you cannot walk around, you know, San Diego as Hugh Jackman. But I did. In fact, this morning, I got dressed up in my full Wolverine costume. Not one person stopped me. But one guy goes, yeah, not bad. And another one said, whoa, way too tall, buddy, way too tall. Wolverine for me. 
you know what? We are going to, don't worry. We are going to show it again, but first, help me, help me tell these people how awesome sauce it is to see them on the stage. Again, but first I'm going to tell you about a couple things. Thank you all. Thank you. Now, if you guys want to watch the footage, I know you haven't seen it yet. If you step off the stage this way, if you step off the stage this way, there's glasses waiting for you. information and you want to find yourself in this room you'll be able to take a picture of yourself while they were all lined up you'll be able to tag yourself and show everybody you were here or again turn in your neighbors for America's Most Wanted. Uh, you'll be able to find that information on Fox's Twitter uh, I'll tweet it as well uh, from EW. So we are going to now watch the footage again and these guys haven't seen it yet. Thank you very much.